the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went into their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting the child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly with that, with, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Over the last several years, the adoption of the Blue Christmas has begun to take root. While I could understand in theory why some or certain people would embrace this holiday, I couldn't really understand until the oppressive call of death draped itself over my family this year. First with the death of my mother just before Easter, and now my dad quite suddenly and unexpected, unexpectedly, a mere six days before Christmas, I find I can relate only all too well. At a time when there is joy and cheer everywhere, there is a great deal of dissonance when all your emotions point to grief and sorrow. Putting on a happy face feels incongruent and superficial. Oh, there may be moments when you share a story that, that brings fond memories along with smiles and joy, but they are free, fleeting and fragile. When you are full of sorrow and care, it is difficult to be full of joy and good cheer. In fact, being joyful seems to lack a certain integrity, like one is living in denial. In truth, there is a time for grief and sorrow to intentionally express to God sadness and lament as a spiritual discipline, to not stuff those feelings and emotions away so that they don't eat at you, but to embrace them. Tonight is not one of those nights. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Christmas, like Easter and Pentecost, is one of three annual church festivals when we collectively embrace the spiritual discipline of celebration. <laughs> Consider for a moment the angels. We have this image of the angels always being happy and, and singing in the God's presence, but we forget they're not years, decades, or centuries, but millennia-long struggle against Lucifer and the fallen angels. What is the toll that comes from fighting a war that has gone on for ages? What heartache, what sadness, what loss, what grief, what numbness have the angels faced day in and day out for untold millennia? How twisted would our souls become if we had to do that? 
And yet, despite all that, or perhaps because of all that, the angels show up in a multitude to sing, to laugh, to dance, to celebrate the birth of Jesus. They celebrate his birth because it breaks into their world just as much as it does ours, disrupting the flow of time that inevitably, inevitably seems to lead to sin, death, and evil. But it disrupts it with God's presence, love, and grace that change The discipline of celebration has a way of, of breaking up and breaking in to the cycles of life by helping us reconnect with God, who turns our world upside down and right side up. Celebration has the power to, to set us free from stuckness in our grief, in our relationships, in a moment. And in any in time that holds us captive and refuses to let us go and grow. Celebration sets us free for laughter and singing and dancing, for embracing the big and the little things in life that bring joy. Celebration comes when the common ventures of our shared life are redeemed from the forces that try to render them mundane and meaningless trivial and trite. <clears throat> Christmas is a reminder to us that God is not just simply watching us, but watching out for us. Christmas is a sign for us to shout out, Rejoice, for the reign of God has come near. In fact, I invite you to do that. Shout out with me. Rejoice, Rejoice for the reign of God, God is come near. near. No longer to sin and death, sorrow and grief have the last say in our lives because God has acted. God has joined us in human flesh. And that physical manifestation is no small thing because celebration calls for physical manifestation in laughter, in singing, in dancing. Moreover, true celebration cannot be contained. As any child knows, it must jump forth with the whole body. I remember a little boy I baptized as a baby who by the age of two was able to sit quietly for an entire service without fussing or being disruptive. But the moment that service was over, he was out in the aisle boogieing down, wiggling around, laughing, from the bottom of his heart. <laughs> it was how he shouted out, Rejoice! For the reign of God has come near. Join me. Rejoice! Rejoice for the reign of God has come near. As such, there is a part of me that thinks that he understood worship and celebration better than the rest of all of us adults who sat there quietly and responsibly and with proper decorum and, and respect throughout the service. Well, somebody might have dared to tap their toe to the rhythm of the choir anthem, but tapping your foot to the beat of music is not dancing. Mm -hmm. Dancing involves moving to the whole body, a way of shouting out, you know what? Rejoice, Rejoice for the, the reign, reign of God is come near. Laughter in monotone uh, 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 <laughs> is not celebration. Like singing, real laughter comes from, from the belly, causing your whole body to shake. Laughter and singing are a way of sh to shout out, Rejoice, for the, the reign, reign of, of God, God has come near. But even then, laughter may not be celebration until your cheeks hurt <laughs> and you can't breathe and you are crying tears of joy, which just might quite possibly be one of the best ways God has given us to say to sin and death, screw you! <laughs> Amen. Amen. So yes, there is a time for grief and sorrow, but not tonight. <laughs> tonight and tomorrow are set aside for us by God so that we may celebrate. Celebrate Jesus' birth with our whole being, 
for us to, to sing and dance and laugh while we eat, drink, and be merry. For us to shout out, what? Rejoice, for the reign of God has come near. Amen. Amen. Amen.